This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it is the Awesome Cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, ready to chat, uh, get geeky, and chat uh, awesome things in Pittsburgh. And uh, right here in the Beachview Studios, Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We got a great crew here with us today, even a little bit of uh, audience members as well. First of all, uh, if you're on Awesome Cast Gold, you can uh, check out uh, uh, Dutters um, in German. <laughs> 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 not me speaking German. as part of her uh position as a director of sales and marketing over at the scare house yeah that's that's crazy i've never <laughs> seen anything like that before but yes i get to see that's amazing I, I, my first friend that's been dubbed in german this is great <laughs> fantastic Dutters how you doing worldwide. how you doing this week <laughs> good good i'm stuck in the couch with somebody though yes you are <laughs> and he brought people too doug durda joins us here this week of yin's love barbecue <laughs> what should I drink that? What's up? And yeah, and you brought friends too. I did. You you brought you brought somebody. I did. I brought teaspoon with me. Yes. Hi, teaspoon. Hey. <laughs> he's here. So he's checking everything out. And you you do podcasting with him, right? I'm getting him into it. He's getting him into it. Yeah, yeah he's he's starting to get into it. He's really curious about the the how thing happen how things happen. Mm-hmm. That's like he's getting to like show production. He's learning about the effects of the mixer, mm-hmm. how microphones work, why microphones work the way they do, lighting, stuff like that. So he's totally geeking out right about now. That's awesome. Yeah, I gave him a little bit of a tour of like how things work over on this side of the board and everything, too, for the video. So uh, it's really cool. Really, he's really learning. Cool. That's awesome. How old is he? Eight and a half. Eight? You got to say and a half because your birthday is going to be coming up soon. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Uh, well, we're going to be getting into a lot of uh, tech stuff today, and maybe some stuff he'll be into. I hope you learned something today, bud. Uh, but this is the Awesome Cast. You can join us here every Tuesday night, live at awesomecast.net, or uh, various Awesome Cast, uh, our YouTube, our Periscope, and uh, Twitch for Sorgatron Media. And our main uh, chat is over at the uh, Facebook Live for the Awesome Cast. You can subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, video versions on the YouTube, and the Facebook page uh, when we get everything bundled up and cleaned up and nice. Thank you to our streaming partners, TheRiversEdgePGH.com. Uh, if you're here on live, that's yeah, usually what you're here in the live feed of while we're setting up in the live stream. And you can uh, check out our rebroadcast of the show Saturdays at 9 a.m. over there. And also go check out The Metal Edge. We recently had an interview um, with uh, one of the directors of that part uh, uh, that spinoff of the River's Edge and their their global expansion. And also thanks to our friends, the 405media.com, another streaming partner that carries us at 9 a.m. Pacific time, noon uh, Eastern at the 405media.com, Monday through Friday. And also thank you to our gold uh, subscribers. Again, they're going to get German dutters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the coffee club level, they'll be getting that Matt Weller, Matt underscore Weller, one T on the Twitter, and at the dollar fan on the show level, Michael Fedor Show, uh, Mike Fedor Show on the Twitter. You guys can uh, uh, please contribute to the show. It helps keep the lights on here in the studio quite literally. And and even more so because now we have Christmas lights too, uh, but uh, uh, it, you know there's different levels for that. Uh, you get a uh, state of the show at the ten dollar level, and of course the twenty dollar executive producer level. It has some fringe benefits as well, and you never know what we're going to do extra for our Patreon supporters as we have in the past. So let's get into our awesome thing of the week producer Missy has something to say though. What's what's going on? Well, I was just going to say for our Patreon supporters. It is Christmas time, and somebody has been known to uh, bake some cookies for our Patreon supporters. Mm-hmm. So if that doesn't entice you to to hit up the Patreon, I don't know what would. 
Absolutely. Yeah, we've, we've done that before. We've, we've been known to. And you don't know what we're going to end up doing this year. So, um, <laughs> first of all, let's get into our awesome, sh- our awesome things of the week. And I love that there's this, and it says, or German TV Yay! for gutters. <laughs> uh, what is your awesome thing other than uh, now being even more internationally known, apparently? <laughs> Look what this is. Rock the microphone. <laughs> I got Look. A, I got a new phone. Holy you got, crap. It's the X. You got the iPhone X? I, I, I knew because I knew when you got it because I'm, I'm sure the first thing you did was the uh, Animoji poop. Yes, I sent the Animoji poop Which to I, a lot of people. Can I get that as an Android user? The Animoji poop? Yes, can you send that to me? Oh, I don't know. I could try. I'll, I'll send you an emoji I, poop. I think it's. I'm a, not on her distribution list. I, you know, Sorry, <laughs> you're not on the poop distribution list. No, <laughs> no poop list for you. I can't read German. I'm sorry. Uh, we we and we've had a little bit of review from Chilla, of course. You know, he's always the uh, early adopter. But you know, there's a lot of gesture kind of changes on this thing. How how's it been adapting to it? Uh, it's it's so funny because everybody's like, "You're gonna miss the home button." And the thing that drives me craziest about it is the the thing where you pull up the notification, not the notifications, but the, the menu where your flashlight is and all that good stuff is in this corner now and not from the bottom. Mm-hmm. It's in the other corner, which it doesn't belong there. Um, but it has a cool thing where you can record the screen in a video, what you're doing, which I did record some of Sorg's awesome thing of the week and send it to both Missy and Sorg. <laughs> I don't want to spoil your awesome thing of the week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's been driving me crazy. And then like the where we usually flip up to close the apps, that's not... There's now a pause and then a hold down the button. I had to actually look it up. I mean, it was weird because I actually had to look up a couple things to see how you do it. But um, yeah, it's beyond that. I, I've really enjoyed this phone. I've had a lot of fun. Um, I do have the facial recognition on, so I feel like we're bonded. It's very weird because I'll look at it and I'll be like, hey, what's up? And it'll open. <laughs> <laughs> like it's so, I don't know what it is, but it's so fun because it just sees my face. I do really like the fact that the notifications do not show unless it's my face, mm-hmm. which is super nice. That's a nice privacy feature. Yeah. I didn't think I'd like that so much, but it's there are moments where my phone's away from me and I'm like, oh, I probably shouldn't. And I'm like, oh, well. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's in the emojis are just phenomenal. I'll have to record another one. I think I, I lost that one. I'll have to record another one just for Doug Woo-hoo. with my right. poop head. <laughs> <laughs> it is pretty sweet. I I saw. Did you put it on uh, Instagram? Instagram. That's where I saw that. Um, I don't know. Did Chilla talk about clips at all? Uh, no, because I don't think it was out at the time okay. when it, when it, when he had it. So clips is is a thing. Essentially, you can uh, put together videos. It's a way to produce videos, add sound, um, add photos, and uh, mm-hmm. such. But they have this thing called scenes, and it takes advantage of the augmented reality, in that it puts you. It's, you're not gonna be able to see this at all. But um, whoa! If you can see, yeah. See, it puts me into. It puts you into the scenes, mm-hmm. and so well, I think uh, so. I got some video here. Is it is it this thing here where um, it's kind of oh here? Yeah. So then this. it's 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 really and there's Star Wars. Looks like, like I the, just seen mm-hmm. on the Millennium Falcon. Hey, and it's not just my face. Like it picks up everything around me. Mm-hmm. It was interesting. I was driving, oh, cool. so it was looking like I was looking out the window. Like this was the world outside my window because it was picking up the car. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's it's fun to play with and kind now, of just remember tragic. like After Effects how much work it used to take mm-hmm. just to do something like that. Yeah, but you whoa! See- I'm in the Yaha video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we should have plugged yours in instead of what I had set up over here. Um, that's awesome. So so I mean, it, 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 it does it seem like it's a little more than just gimmicky at this point? Like, do, do you see kind of some benefits from from the advantage? You know, obviously the face uh, ID, but like you know something like that. Is that kind of you know, think you could use that somewhere. Uh, yeah, I, I I really enjoyed logging into things mm-hmm. from my backup without my password. I just mm-hmm. had to look at it, and it it was me. I realized it was me, so that was cool. I haven't tried any of the paying Apple Pay or anything with that with my face or facial recognition yet. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. Usually in the morning or before bed, a lot of times it won't because I think the lighting it's not so flattering apparently on my face. And, um, but just kind of getting used to it, it very much, I was so mad cause I meant to bring my last Samsung cause I had a pink case and it looks just like this. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I was like, I'm having a lot of deja vu over here. Um, really liked the camera and low lights, uh, was pretty impressed. Portrait mode's a lot of fun to play with. Mm-hmm. Um, but the low light on this camera is really good. I took it up to, um, Toledo for the Christmas lights and 
was really impressed. Just, I don't lo- th- just looking at a little bit of that uh, earlier today, actually. Did you see the jellyfish video? I did not see the jellyfish. Oh, yeah, it's on Instagram. It's um, I recorded the video of just jellyfish, and it's of course it's through very thick plexiglass, and it's, it just looks so good. And there's little, see all the little pieces. Nice. <laughs> so I mean, like that's it. you know, wow. I I feel like I'm not too far behind with the success. Mm-hmm. Like those little things, like the portrait mode. Mm-hmm. Like it, it, those are the things that you're like, okay, that seems like something i could use uh, to to an extent that would be worth the upgrade at least so yeah i i i'm i'm really loving it and it's very intuitive and um the, just the screen it, it is gorgeous mm-hmm. it is really and, and a thing i'm not going to spoil for you uh you're awesome thing awake looks so good mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. but yeah i'm loving it so far awesome uh doug what is your awesome thing of the week speaking of smartphones mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so not an iPhone. You're in a different camp over here. Oh, yeah. and you I'm, have in the, been, I'm in the cool kids camp. You were the one I'm that, in the future. You've always <laughs> been droid guy. You were I've the guy. Been dro- well, I was I was a Crackberry guy until I got to, before Android Ooh. came out. But you were the one who always had the scary droid uh, notification sound going I off did. at PodCamp. Uh, <laughs> it's because I, I never bothered to turn. It was just one of those things like like when your clock flashes 12 all the time. Like I just on the VCR, I just ne- I'm one of those guys. I just never change things on there. Mm-hmm. Now, unless you pull out like a Pearl Jam ringtone, then I'll change it. But there until that go. day happens. Yeah. You, so, and your, you and your classic rock. That's right. I'm a classic kind of guy. So the the Samsung. It's coming out with new battery technology that's going to be, you're going to be able to charge your phone in, I believe, uh, just a matter of minutes, like uh, less than 15 minutes or so. Because right now, you can get a full charge on their fast charge service. So this is the the 7S Edge. I'm still trying to get used to all the Samsung names. Because I was always just strictly like a Motorola guy. Mm-hmm. And this is my first actual Samsung phone, and I love it. Uh, the, and the edges are the, well. That's that's like last so year's nice. phone. It, it is, is it's still so a nice. good it's, looking phone. Mm-hmm. Besides the cracks in my screen, this is fantastic. Yes, <laughs> and it was waterproof too, which was good until like got cracks in it. Mm-hmm. Which apparently this is not uh, resistance against a six year old, which is why there's cracks. So the 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 main thing that sold me on it though was the charger for this thing, the fast charger that mm-hmm. came with the seven, and I believe the six had it too. Like I could charge this phone completely. In about an hour, mm-hmm. which before with my previous phones, it would take me like four hours. And to that's charge. a regular plug in. Like I know I have a, a USB three plug here that has a fast charging kind of setup yes. on this laptop. Right. But this is just you plug it into a USB. Well, no, there's and... a fast charger. Uh, the the brick, I guess, is the best way. To, oh, OK. The pl- okay. Um, so when you plug it into there, it will just it takes off and it, it is charged within within less than an hour. Mm-hmm. Now with the newer one, I guess it's going to be charged even faster than that. And Google has been saying that, that with the new Pixel 2 that it will charge within 15 minutes. So this is kind of like along the lines like this one's going to be a little bit faster. Now there's been problems with the Pixel 2 not really charging that fast. So I'm trying to figure out if this is like a legit story that's going through or are we going to find out that once it's actually released that it's not really going to happen. Well, and I think you also find that, you know, I mean, this is they're on on the drawing board, you know, so Joe, is it going to come through? Well, my, my question is, how does this help with exploding batteries? I don't do PR for Samsung, so I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> well, what, so one of the other things I was reading too is a lot of the batteries, though. So they're they're bragging that you know they've got these more powerful chargers that you're going to use, mm-hmm. but the batteries don't support them yet. They're still only going to go. They're only going to charge at a certain power. So that that's kind of like an issue that they're going to run into. But it expl- I don't know about the exploding phones. <laughs> like. The, my Galaxy is fine, but the Notes, I guess, were the ones that were just blowing up left and right. Right, and it was a, it was a design flaw. It, it was it was yeah. they, they missed something. They didn't give, um, I think it was they didn't give enough room for the swelling that a battery does, and that's mm-hmm. what led to the issues that they had. So but the fact that I could I could charge my phone within seven minutes completely would just blow my mind because my biggest complaint is that if I'm taking video, if I'm out. If I'm broadcasting from my phone, taking a bunch of pictures, or if I go to a Pens game, I'll go from a, I'll make sure my phone is at 100 percent when I go into a Pens game. Yeah. When I leave there, it's about 60. And that's and, and you're using it, and I'm you, using it, I'm yeah. just, and I'm not using it uh, like more than the the standard person. Like I'm taking a couple pictures here and there, and 
I might take like a five second video if that, but it just, it gets sucked down really fast. Mm. Even during the day, if I don't use my phone at all during the day and I don't have a lot of notifications turned on, it'll go from a hundred percent down to about 65 by the time I leave work, which is just depressing. But then I've got the fast charger in my car and it's, it's all back yeah, up. Yeah. It's kind of like what you're, what, 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 <laughs> what's your stop gap, right? Between yeah. one charger to the next, right? And well, what? It makes me think about people like, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, who's got like three phones on him constantly because Mm -hmm. this phone's dead. You know, let's toss this one aside, charge that one while I'm on this phone now. So, you know, it's going to cut back. I I didn't realize he was doing that. I'm almost positive he showed that in one of his videos. Like he's constantly going through devices and charging. But, you know, look how much we use our devices now. It's if you can if you can get a battery that will recharge within seven to 15 minutes completely. Mm hmm. With the usage that we have out of that, I mean that that's gonna be huge for us, especially if we're you know we're out on the road. Yeah, they're doing everything. I know that's what I'm gonna say in a moment. Um, doing some video game playing, you know. So that's that's another stuff thing that too, looks yeah. good. You know, I mean, I I'm I'm, be, I'm becoming increasingly impressed. Like I was grabbing some games on Apple TV uh, last night, and I'm just like, wow, these are this is good. Yeah, you know, like, these are great graphics, and and basically like this hardware blown up to a TV. You oh, know, yeah. it, it's incredible. And but then but then you're doing all that on a phone battery and not plugged into a wall. Plus, if I'm on a trip, I'm watching Netflix and mm-hmm. downloading shows to watch too. That drains my battery. Last that bus trip, or last that commute, or last that uh, plane, you know, ride or something like that. So because you you don't want to get to the airport and your phone doesn't work, and then you can't get your Uber <laughs> to get out yeah. there, right? <laughs> So, so go find an outlet for about seven minutes or fifteen minutes, and go yeah, charge your yeah. phones. Hope you don't get some dirty uh, USBs, and uh, you know. Well, uh, one of those things they said this. Uh, I blame Katie for this um, <laughs> because she brought this to my attention last week. I've had no interest ever in Animal Crossing. I want to point out, correct me, too. ever, ever. I didn't realize I was looking through because I was so interested. I was like, did you know that Animal Crossing started on the N sixty four? Really. Yeah, I had no idea. So uh, last week, because I like all things Nintendo, and and everything Nintendo is on the front page of my uh, of my iPhone. So I I loaded up Animal Crossing, Pocket Camp, and dived into this, and I am freaking hooked on this. It's you know as uh, Katie talked about last week, it's you go and you build your camp, and uh, and you. Get things for other. Hold on, like, hold on a second. I'm gonna load it up here uh, for you guys on video. There you go. So I mean, I'm just spending my time digitally fishing and giving animals gifts of fruits and bugs that I'm catching and building my camp. And um, it's gotten interesting. Um, uh, uh, Katie, Katie, and I have been sending each other pictures of hanging out at each <laughs> other's camps. And, uh, oh, it's nighttime now. This is cool, too, because as you play through the day, it actually, like, it's nighttime. And when I'm playing this at four in the morning, all the characters are asking why I'm still awake. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's, it's kind of interesting. And it's kind of segmented, and I, I saw some comments about how uh, Animal Crossing is typically a little more open world than this. And you basically just kind of have these islands that you drop in, and you go fishing at one, you go bug hunting at the other one, and you just pick up fruits at another one. And, uh, and you put your camp together, and, and they go hang out, and you go uh, chat with them. Whoop, sorry about that. You go chat with them, and they give you things. And you just keep doing that over and over again. Now, and this is obviously, this is a freemium game. You have these leaf tickets, and that's, uh, you know, what you can use to kind of expedite, um, you know, create creating furniture for, for your camps or or doing other activities, or there's some special things you can buy to get certain characters or clothing or something. I haven't really seen it. I'm up to like level 20 or level 19 on here, and I haven't really felt like the freemium has gotten in the way of this yet. Um, how, are, how are you feeling on this, Katie? No, I've been pretty good. I've, I've actually been using my, which I was afraid to because everybody was very much the, another one of these games where they just want you to spend money, and I've I've been playing for hours, mm-hmm. countless hours, and I haven't spent anything yet. Well, here's here's a question from the chat room, and it's not really a question. I'm putting it into a question. Have you guys friended Amanda Narcissi? No, she doesn't seem like someone I, I'd be interested in friending. I think I did. Because she's been playing for three days straight now. Oh, oh it's awesome. Oh, oh. Um, and we also have the 
LOL emoji for, on Twitter from Mary Mac, from Mary Mac Bakehouse, uh, letting us know that, that you guys are a little bit crazy, I think. Uh, yeah. I refuse it, to give in. Look how beautiful it Doug, is. come on. on. It's so, it's that Nintendo cutesy charm. That's the reason that we like Nintendo things, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you know you want to, Doug. <laughs> you know you want to come hang out at our campsite. You can, you can. Will there be pizza, though? Uh, well, that's a good question. Actually, uh, as as Katie uh, uh, sent me a picture and said she left pizza at the campsite, which is, by the way, right beside the porta potty, which always has a line. Although I had a question about that. Yeah, I don't understand. I had a question about yeah. that because nobody goes to my porta potty. Um, <laughs> but I'm worried that the pizza is downwind from the porta potty in your campsite. Ooh. Ooh. It doesn't seem to be stopping anybody from sitting in the chairs next to the porta potty. <laughs> Okay, then it must be well maintained. I would expect you to have but a porta potty. There was a call out <laughs> on that is, that's a party. That's, that's a porta potty potty. Porta potty pizza party? Pizza party? Pizza there you go. Porta potty pizza porta party. Porta potty pizza party. I think I just uh, started a new ad. Um but, it. but Polygon has called out one one amazing thing about or one uh, uh one gripe about Animal Crossing. Mm-hmm. And that is that Pocket Camp's pizzas take absurdly long to make. <laughs> if you look at this and and I was looking at this beforehand because I'm like, oh, what are they talking about? It takes and here's here's a little readout you get and it tells you like what materials you need to make this and everything. And you go to the time for it to 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 go to 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 make and craft this pizza, this special Animal Crossing pizza. It says seven hours to make this pizza. Now I've heard of like slow roasted and uh i mean in the barbecue in the barbecue game you're used to this but but uh, but a seven uh, hour pizza i can't wait no wonder every no wonder everybody's sitting by the porta potty in her camp there's there's (laughs) a legit question to this Mm. because the dough are they making the dough from scratch oh and it needs to rise because the dough is a process that takes longer than what you would normally think usually they have it prepped and ready to roll Mm -hmm. when they're doing pizzas like at the pizza shop they'll, they'll a have a bunch point. of balls of pizza how dough. many pizzas are they selling in the in animal crossing in this world also is science the same i'm thinking no concerning how fishing works you know and talking here's, cats here's, yes here's my thing i think we need to have a representative of slice come in studio to explain this absolutely to us. absolutely we uh, our friends at slice if you don't want to wait for seven hours for pizza <laughs> you can go down to slice on broadway right down the, right down the road here in in in, in beachview over at Carnegie. PA or PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, or their new location over at East Liberty. And you don't have to wait seven hours for the perfect pepperoni pizza supporting Pittsburgh podcasting. Uh, you can get it a lot quicker than that. Usually, like, I don't know, what, 30 minutes, 45 minutes if you get in delivery. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's, it's the way to go. Although, I it bet did, it didn't even take them that long to make the Hello Kitty. Yeah. That is true. Either, that it. is true. And I bet, considering they made a Hello Kitty one, I bet they could make an Animal Crossing pizza. <laughs> right? I we need an Animal could. Crossing pizza. There you go. So, Slice on Broadway. Check them out. PGH of course, Slice on the Twitter. Let them know the awesome cast sent you. And thank you to them for feeding our crew and supporting the show here. So, um, yeah, she's been playing for three days straight. She's been sick. Uh, box oven Girl Scout cooking style. <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, uh, from that, uh, we had a few... Oh, jeez. I don't... Okay, we got a call. Here's an awesome thing. And the one thing that's not awesome is what's going on with net neutrality. I don't want to get too deep into it, but obviously, you know, this has been the big talk on any technology show or any... Or even beyond that, you know, in uh, the FCC... It has their plan to, to strike down that tr- neutrality, which is just going to, you know, uh, let let your Comcast and Verizon do whatever the heck they want at this point. Uh, if you don't know what the heck this is and don't understand net neutrality, I invite you to go over to our friends over at Pitchworks. Scott McTaggart over there, uh, who's been on, uh, you know, we've interviewed him on this show uh, before, but there's a wonderful video that was posted explaining net neutrality with a nice little animated version of Scott in the video, by the way, which is pretty cool. Uh, but uh, it, 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 it brings it together and uh, really kind of boils it down for you so you know exactly what's going on with this. So please go over to Pitchworks Facebook, check out the video. And uh, and, and this was actually put together by uh, Josh uh, Corcoran. 
uh, over at Spare Change, which is another awesome uh, YouTube show that's uh, going on these days as well. So I invite you to go check all that stuff out. The video of the kid going to take the drink from the hose is the perfect explanation of what's happening. He goes to take the drink and it goes away. He pulls back and it's fast. He gets closer and it goes away. Well, and, and, and you didn't see the, the, the audio next to it. But every time they talk about protections, they show a poster or a scene from the bodyguard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing! I was it had me howling when I was watching oh, this I, thing. I can't wait. And to when watch it this. talks about delivery, they just keep showing these videos of like mail and FedEx just tossing like like packages over fences. And everything. It's it's it, Josh did an amazing job putting this video together, and I invite you to please go check it out. We did share it over on Awesome Cast and about every feed that I could possibly think of. So, um, by the way, uh, we had a note from our friend Brian over at uh, uh, River's Edge. He says he's been a, <laughs> he's gotten really techy. I, I think he talked about like his old old phone when he was on here last, and how you know how kind of behind he is. But he did pick up an iPad Pro the other day. Um, and he's, he says, uh, uh, we're moving to an era with these powerful tablets and phones where the average person no longer has any need for a traditional computer or laptop. And we, we, we've kind of like talked that point a lot on this show, uh, here and there, like, you know, not us making podcasts and videos and, you know, these things, but like the general person really, that's all they kind of need on hand. Yes. And, and no, <laughs> <laughs> so I was at uh, Best Buy. We were, uh, Teaspoon and I were at Best Buy this uh, this past weekend, past holiday, and it's really neat to see that they sell tablets with keyboards now. Because that's been one of the big issues is people getting used to tapping their fingers on a giant screen like that. But now, now the fact that you can actually start typing on a physical keyboard that comes with it, and they're, they're 150 bucks, mm-hmm. like for a decent tablet, which I was really impressed to see. My issue with it comes with the experience where a lot of the mobile apps that you load onto these tablets don't give you the full functionality that you get with the website still. Right. With a laptop, mostly because I deal with marketing and I have to deal with Facebook ad manager, which is a huge pain in the butt. (laughs) But if you're, so like if you're on a laptop and you want to share something that you're looking at to a page, you can do that. You can't do that from the Facebook app, which Mm -hmm. is installed onto your device. And Facebook, how do you not know how to fix that yet? It's been an issue for years. Help me out here. We do get to that where it's just like, oh, I need to share this to... uh, I I can't can't. share a video we're streaming to an event on the app. Right? (laughs) But pay more money so that... You can advertise it. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. you can't do what you want to do. Exactly. Um, no, 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 no. But I mean, but still, I think the people that we're talking about that maybe don't need a computer won't miss some of those features. Uh, I know plenty of people that would rather get rid of their laptops. Yeah. And just, yeah. yeah. If I could do most of my work on a tablet, on I mean, I've got a Samsung tablet. Wow, I, I am just all about Samsung now. I'm Look realizing you. that. Well, you're, a company, uh, you're a company man over there, apparently. Uh, Samsung, if you're looking for. So, <laughs> uh, but what I've noticed, though, is like when I go around, I am very comfortable just doing everything on a tablet now. Mm-hmm. Like every, Everything I do is like with Google if I need an office suite. I don't have a functioning computer in my home. Get out. I have an iPad Pro. Oh, it's because they're all here. Phones. Yeah, they're yeah they're all here. <laughs> exactly. I go home. I'm not touching the computer. There's no need really for us to have laptops in our house. No. Besides the whole keyboard fact yeah. of it, because it's after a while you don't want to. <laughs> your fingertips are going to hurt when you're going like this all the time. I was listening to the Cord Killers this week, and they're talking about uh, the one guy and his wife. It was like, yeah, we're sitting here and we're watching TV, and each of us are on our phone looking at Twitter, and each of us have a laptop on the arm of the chair. <laughs> It's just like wow. I, I can't say that I've never done that. <laughs> and then the guy, and then the one, then the people on there, and, and some, I noticed some other friends that have talked about this too, about how they watch TV while they play video games. I can't split that up. All right, I can't split that up in my head. Like I, that's that's my multitasking limit. If I'm playing a video game, I gotta be into the video game unless I'm tapping through Pocket Camp. And I'm not pointing at Dutters here, who can I'm sure can multitask oh, yeah. like crazy. But Teaspoon over here, and I've heard this from other dads too, that their mm-hmm. kids will sit there, and I heard this over the holiday, their kids will sit there 
playing a video game. Laptop is going over here. They're they're FaceTiming their friends over here. Jeez. Like three things at once. And I'm like, I I just want to play Marvel Avengers and uh, yeah, it's but a, but they're streaming. If and it was fighting streaming. games, but like somebody playing like Tomb Raider, you have to like well, look playing for like things Roblox and, and, yeah. and Minecraft yeah. and stuff like okay, that. Okay, okay. But st- just like to think that this is how they're always playing games. Like this yeah. is how they're always consuming media and everything going on. Like w- we need to pay attention to what these guys are doing because this, this is what's going to be you know mainstream here within the next five six years. That's what everyone's going to be doing. Like. These guys are going to be high school, college age kids that this is how they're going to want to consume media. So, Mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be competing against somebody that's got a YouTube show playing while your show's on this TV and and something else is going on. It's like I actually get to use a Back to the Future reference. Mm -hmm. All right. Number two. By the way, I got a show for you. Back to the Future number two. When Marty Jr. comes into the room. He looks at the big sc- hey, he looks at the screen and he's like, I want channels 52, 24, 36, 15, 11, and weather channel. You know, and like they and they all pop up. At we once. can kind of do that now. We can absolutely yeah. do that now. We can. There was uh, another one on the another guy on Core Killers was, was talking about his computer in front of him has like at least four or five screens, and he has TV on one, has Twitter and whatever he's working on in front of him. And then he has a video game over here, and you know, like he—that's just the way he operates. I could operate like that. There's times where I've—I've I've been in—I've fr- had a laptop in front of me. Up above me, I'll have like I could have a YouTube video playing. I could yeah. also have my streams going here. Okay, I, I am, and but, I am realizing how I do work. Uh, other than the fact that I do have like four screens in front of me currently, um, <laughs> but 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 you know it's it's operational and and but if I'm at my desk over there, mm-hmm. my laptop has a second monitor and we have another computer and I tweet decks on one, YouTube's on one, and I'm whatever I'm working on, unless I'm doing video editing, then I need two monitors to kick out a a feed of what I'm working on, um, yeah. So I, I think if it's we ta- did if we did based. have if we did have that many monitors available to us, we probably could do it. Katie, how many monitors do you could you work with? She's trying to bake a pizza. I'm, okay. like, I'm, I'm doing a podcast <laughs> while watching the podcast on Facebook and playing Whoa. Animal Crossing. And case Whoa. in point. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I usually no, I only have my laptop or my phone or yeah, my laptop. Yeah, you desktop mostly you live phone. in mostly mobile world as far I, as that goes. I do, but I do I don't I don't like to work. I, I like the keyboard and the screen and having mm-hmm. that away from my face. Like mm-hmm. that's, I think that's one of the things that why I still use a desktop computer and um, my laptop is because it's just too in my face too often. That's right. You're still working on a Mac Mini, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. What are we gonna sorry. do when there's so much oh, sorry, when there's so much like virtual reality going on and we we're just gonna have the mm-hmm. headset on? Yeah. Well, no, the, 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 that's the that's the other thing is I think we talked about this maybe on the show the virtual reality setup where it's they talked about this on one of the Tom Merritt podcasts for the one book I can't remember what that is but they said there there's there's these high end VR headsets for business that basically it's you put them on and you simulate all the screens you need in front of you instead of putting screens in front of you. Where's so. Chilla at? Because that's such a Tony Stark thing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Missy, you're, you're starting to say something? Well, I was just going to say, how many things do you have going on right in front of you at the moment? Yeah. Because I, I know I have Facebook up. I have the Google Doc for our stuff here. I've got our Twitter feed going. And you only have two screens. Yeah, and I have it I the snap feature is my friend because mm-hmm. I snap everything and I can also snap like half screen on the one side so I can fit essentially I can fit four things within one screen mm-hmm. if I so chose to do to do that um but yeah it's just it's how we function I guess yeah, when I, totally. I look at all the tabs that I have running too in like Chrome yep. and Firefox oh, yeah. Because I'll, I mean, I'll have, like I said, I'll have a YouTube video going, and then I'll also have like five other tasks going yep. simultaneously. Like one report's running here. I've got my Twitter feed going there, and then I've got a ticketing system. Not that I do this at work. I have a ticketing system going over here, and you know, just like five or six other things. Because when I'm at home, I, if I'm working from home, I'm multitasking there. Plus, I have a t- sometimes you know, I can't sit in my house with quiet because I I don't sit at work with without my headphones on. So mm-hmm. I'll have music playing somewhere. So I guess really this this isn't as we answered our own question. This really is as bad as we think it is. 
But I'm thinking of just like video gaming, though, like how you, you want to be completely focused on your game. How are you mm. focused on? But again, if it's something that's not intent on the video game, I mean, there there are kind of passive video games that you kind of do some things and you're not fully focusing on it. Mm. There are other ones that... Animal Crossing. Exactly. Those are relaxing games, right? Yeah. So it, yeah. it's not like you're going through a quest and you're having to pay attention to the storyline or you're having to pay attention to, to different things either. I just really just cue Katie working in Animal Crossing mm-hmm. right now. <laughs> so at least we figured out how to keep Dutters quiet. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's funny because I think the real challenge for all of us would be to have no screens and no sounds. Mm-hmm. That's the scary, terrifying thing we can't do. I yes. could live in the 90s again. Can you imagine how nice that would be? I could, I could barely use my phone because I don't want to go over my, my minutes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, Katie, we, we talked about last week, um, Ello yeah. making their comeback, but apparently uh, people have noticed. Yeah, apparently. Okay, so people, uh, uh, this seems to happen with different platforms, I guess, like Ello and such, whenever they get a lot of media attention is they get a whole bunch of spam bots of the naked variety. <laughs> <laughs> So after like all the attention that Ello got by being reintroduced, so the spam bots were out in. The, I found you a nice clean article with very clean spam. My Ello, is, uh, this one from uh, Yev P. My Ello is now getting flooded with naked people adding me. Makes opening up those emails with their profile pictures embedded inside an interesting gamble. <laughs> wow. I, have, have you been diving into it? Have you no, been I, um, naked bombed? No, I haven't. Sad face. <laughs> But apparently this happened back in 2014 for them, too. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, we're working on it. We're working on it. Sure. I don't remember the last time I was on my LO account. We, we were I on still last get, week because we forgot about like it. It's, I still get email notifications from yeah. once in a while, but I've, I haven't had any. I mean, what am I going to do? Go back to Plurk next, too? I mean, yes. There's things that I used to love that just now kind of sit there. Yeah, mm-hmm. LO.co. And I don't know if you you saw this from last year Doug, or last week, Doug, but it's a lot more colorful than it used to be. And Whoa. picture-oriented. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, they, they they relaunched it for creators, and it's lo. dot co. How MySpace of them? I know, right? Yeah, see, that's what I said that's too. That's exactly what we said last week. See, I was on the road last week, so I didn't even get to hear the show yet. Jeez. Uh but anyways, yeah, it's it's the way the way it all goes, and they're not like somebody with a lot of money behind them, like a Facebook, right? That I think they can attack they, this. Didn't they at one point? Did they? Isn't that how they got launched? Is they had they had a group of investors that basically want to come out and do something against Facebook? And- oh right, is yeah. this is this like, and it was, was is this under the whole like federated media kind of concept too? Maybe could be so like there's a lot of people looking to do that kind of open sourcey kind of thing. Um, hey Sorg, yes, can you tell us about this really cool thing in Pittsburgh? This really cool thing in Pittsburgh. Uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, the uh, Rango Giant Cinema thing. That would be the thing. So I've been seeing ads for this, and I've been really curious about this. You know, as somebody who's always been a fan of the Carnegie Science Center um, and the OmniMax and everything like that, they they're, they've relaunched and redesigned the the OmniMax. And, and, and so the OmniMax was basically, I guess, IMAX, but it was it was circular, so you could do these really interesting um, giant uh, 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 interact not interactive but immersive kind of concepts in these videos and you go downstairs and you could see the film and the film was giant and everything which I think mm-hmm. I think it's still like that IMAX format well they've upgraded it and it's all digital and it's all 3d and apparently uh, from what I understand I think the screen is gonna be more like it's not it's not as domed as before and of course there's um, there was a press uh, article in next Pittsburgh and there was a press opening for it. And they were showing some trailers, including uh, an, an Amazon Adventure 3 Ds now playing. And, of course, Star Wars is going to be here as well. Um, again, I think they've bet on the, the 3D side of things. And I remember they've always had movies there, like Harry Potter. We saw Dark Knight Rises. But it was mm-hmm. always weird because, you, you know, when you see an IMAX film, not every scene's an IMAX, right? And, and then this on top of it was you're on that dome Omnimax, which made it real weird to watch a regular movie. We saw mm-hmm. Harry Potter there. Uh, the one that starts with the bus scene, where it cuts in and out. It's the the ghost bus scene that Harry gets on the bus. Okay, and it's zooming in and out, and it gets thin and gets big and all that. Well, when you're sitting about mid to top level watching that yeah. in that theater, 
everyone was getting motion sickness mm -hmm. because it's so fast moving around. And that, that's like one of my big memories of that theater was we went in there and I went, I cannot watch another movie here because, and I don't get motion sickness, but that was making everyone just kind of run for the doors. Like what just happened in here? Now I did see a very cool Pink Floyd laser light show in there mm -hmm. in the seven, or 70s, in, in the nineties, not that old dutters. Sure. So in the nineties, but like, that was the thing to do when you were at, people like, yeah, let's go watch Pink Floyd on a Friday night at midnight in there. Mm -hmm. And it was a really cool laser experience. I'm really psyched to see how this is going to work out. Mm -hmm. my, my only, my only sad thing is I, I think everything in there is going to be in 3d. So I can't take Missy anymore. I'll go with you. Okay. You can be my, we might have to go see the movie first before we go see it there in case it's not like a, in case it's like a totally like, Oh, Dark Knight Rises. I rewatched in a regular theater because mm -hmm. it, it, it you know you had to we already have our tickets for star wars so we're, we're gonna go check that out opening weekend and um, then or it's like we, we went and saw wonder woman in 4d and then we had to go rewatch it i don't know if i could watch wonder woman 4d in 4d with it kicking you in the back every time you got did you get hit by like a shield or something no or no we got sprayed on we got rained on Ooh, what, uh, what did we have that we were in texas teaspoon we we went to a 4d theater was it the lego one uh, we got sprayed on by foam and oh like, yeah, like we saw this weird Kenny stuff. Wood. Yeah, Kennywood has a Kenny thing. Kennywood four D does yeah. that. Yeah, I dragged Missy into that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that was fun. <laughs> and that was only twelve minutes. Imagine that for two hours. I would be ex physically exhausted. Mm -hmm. coming it out was. Like like, it absolutely was. Also, like also, ago, I think. don't order a hot coffee. Well, you know your chair is going to move. Oh. Yeah. That was a mistake because we got a one in the morning in New York City. And I was like, well, I need some caffeine. And then it was like, oh, this chair is going to move a lot. Uh-oh. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. that's There should be a rule. No sippy cup that. for Sorg. No sippy cup for Sorg. No, 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 no. Uh, also, uh, I wanted to touch on, um, we talked about the phone thing, right? We talked about how we need to you know, kind of get away from it. So how about... This one company has uh, a way to kick your smartphone habit with a substitute phone. There are these phone-shaped objects, and I love, and apparently they have these balls embedded in it, that, that roll, uh, as illustrated by this uh, amazing animated GIF here. Whoa. So the idea is they're made from black poly, oh, geez. Some kind of material. And uh, it simulates the heft of the phone. The beads are a natural uh, uh, howlith stone. And uh, it, so they can simulate scrolling, zooming, and swiping. So you get those. Because it, it talks about how like when you're smoking, it's that motion, right? It's, it's to doing something with your hands. Uh, you so know. is this like a palm-sized fidget spinner? Or not fidget spinner, but the uh, the like little fidget cubes. Oh yeah, kind nice. of. Yeah, it's something for you to play with, and 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 the whole idea is apparently because they're like, well, I guess you have to carry all five of them, <gasps> so you can <laughs> simulate all the different kinds of scrolling by the wheel or by the. Uh, uh, That's uh, weird. I'm gonna chuck everyone. <laughs> this is why we can't be on the show with him. <laughs> He's violence with the fake fake yes. phones. Um, but I, it's, it was a really <laughs> interesting, in my eyes. <laughs> it was a really interesting concept. I, I mean, and we talk about technology addiction and everything. We, we just did an interview a couple weeks ago about an awesome chat talking about this. You know, I mean, it is like how many times you pick up your phone and just like, I really didn't need to do this. I just mm -hmm. kind of was wondering what's up and I know there's nothing new, you know, and it's, you're doing that thing with well, your that, thumb. That's how Facebook messes with you, too, because they, they learn how often you would pick up your phone and what's causing you to pick up your phone. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it, it's that whole, like, you have one new notification, you take a look at it, and you realize, that's the same thing I just looked at. Or it's, right. you know, like, Sorg liked this video. Okay. That's great. But I, I'm tapping on, like, but it's not taking me to anything. That's just giving me notifications. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that, that is so frustrating when you click those and it doesn't go to anything. That's why I think it's, Instagram dri is trying to purposely drive us all crazy because of the fact that we're getting pictures, you know, four days after something yes. happens. Mm -hmm. So, like, I got to be on it more often because if I am, then I'm going to see these updates more often. Well, I, well here, then, then, then I feel like I'm on too often and I see the same thing on Facebook over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And same with Instagram. 
I'm starting to get that on Facebook. Mm-hmm. If somebody even likes a post or comments on it, mm-hmm. then it bumps it right back up, even if I don't know that person, which kind of bugs me. Right. Because I'm seeing like the same stories. I, I, I liked it because a friend posts. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, kind of throw support, give you the thumbs up. Mm-hmm. That's cool. And then I'm like, yeah, okay, now your aunts are all commenting, your cousins are, yeah. And yeah, I got to off notifications. Make, makes me afraid I'm such to... a lazy social media person. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's like I commented on Swagger Monkey yesterday, and, and now I just keep getting all of the messages for it. Like all, all of the people I know, like especially the wrestlers and things that have like just a following, mm-hmm. and I, you know, I want to support them, right? Mm-hmm. And then as soon as I do, now I like people I don't care about commented also on that post. I right? get that a lot in the, yeah. the barbecue forums, and especially like mm-hmm. Weber Grill. If there's a, they'll feature like somebody's like cook of the week or whatever, and I'll like it because a friend of mm-hmm. mine was featured on there once, so I, I liked it. And the next thing I know, like there's like a hundred comments and likes going on so if i wasn't touching my phone every five minutes or so i get a new notification to go check it out mm. i'm like this is this is it this is idiotic but i can't stop doing it yeah well sort ah. sort and i had this conversation because people will tag us in different things and there's this one wrestling is it is it a fed or is it another like wrestling talk discussion thing that i don't know i get tagged by all of those exactly they, they tag us like all the time with it and then when somebody responds to it or whatever, like you said, it just brings it right back to the top of it and you can get all these notifications. Twitter's that bad right now too. When people tag you in posts oh, that you're mm-hmm. not even in. Yes. Yep. yes. And, it, and then it gets retweeted and then it, the bots pick it up and then retweet it. Like yep. some posts, I don't mind being tagged. I'm like, whatever. It's, yeah. it's because it, it helps me to find out about it. Absolutely. But then when the bots get a hold of it, you're done. Yeah. yeah and that, that's the problem that we have with it is when it's the conversation, it's helpful. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to take best. Sorg in every Xbox post that I make. Nice. Xbox oh. free gift card. Actually, that's not a bad idea. I could use AOL that, so. disc. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Doug, what is going on with you these days? Uh, <laughs> eating slice, sitting on a couch, and talking about Barnyard Crossing. What, is that what it is? Barnyard? Is that? What? Yes. Animal, Crossing. Yeah. Animal Crossing, Barnyard Crossing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, no, the <laughs> Animal Farm Crossing, animal farm, is it? That uh, thing. There you go. That could be something. Yeah, I'm gonna, I will check that out. Uh, because that farming game that was huge like a few years Farmville? ago? Farmville? Farmville. Yeah. <laughs> Farmville oh. Crossing. It was. I, and the, the original game is basically Farmville. Like, it, 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 that was the... Back to Animal Crossing, I know. But I but know, it was I'm like... It, it's 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 you. <laughs> they didn't change much of the format. Because apparently the original game was you go do something for a bit, you leave, and you come back. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's what it was over and over again, but just with a Nintendo DS or a GameCube or something. So it's like if I don't feed something, will it start crying in my pocket? Uh, like the nineties? Not that a Tamagotchi. Yeah. No, no, it's no, not, not, not that I'm aware of. I hated that thing. I mean, I'm curious. I mean, this, 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 this game's only been out for a week. So what? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the, the iPhone one, yeah. Wow. Or the iPhone Android one, yeah. That is insane. And it's cross-platform. Oh. <laughs> Man. But anyway. was it so genius? Uh, they they put it out right before Thanksgiving. So everybody's so everybody got all this... at home was... Yep. Oh, that's just... That's everybody's so... playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> that is either smart. Either with yep. the other family members... Or avoiding the other family members. Because we all do that. Because it's there's so much football on this holiday season. That's right. That it was overload. So I know, Katie, you were traveling. So I figured yeah. that contributed to a lot of it. Well, I was smart enough to figure out that I need to be on my Wi-Fi <laughs> or destroy my data. Because I didn't think about that. You just started, I just point. started playing. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, oh, shoot. Good thing I'm on Wi-Fi. So I'd be like, oh, there goes data. I don't so need I'm, it. I'm doing barbecue. You're doing barbecue. <laughs> there it is. Oh, hey, look at that face. Oh, hey, look at that look guy Look at that face there. right there. That guy's familiar. Look at you. You're a superstar. You had less hair back now then. Now we need to translate you into German. Yeah. I can no. do that. I can take care you of that you, for you. Hey, you no. know, love barbecue Dutch version? Now, there is, and I believe, I think you were the reason why I did it. Oh. It's either you or Sir Cone. One of the, I think it might have been Sir Cone, too. So it's yinslovebbq.com or now yinslovebarbecue.com. I went and bought the other domain because everyone's like, how do we say your name? I'm like, you know what? I know it because I had to sit here. I I, and I tell people this. I'm like, Sorg, me, and Missy, and Kay, and all of us were sitting there like, what am I going to do for this name? And we started brainstorming on Slack. And so I know how to say it because I look at it and say yinslovebarbecue, but it's actually spelled yinslovebbq. So... 
I took care of that. Oh, yeah. good. I took care of the situation. Good for you. I fixed the glitch. Here's my problem that I have. I still spell love, L-U-V, for some reason, because it just feels right to me. <gasps> you should totally do that. News love, bub, BBQ. Now I, get, now I gotta do it. Man, there's another 12 bucks out in my pocket. There you go. You don't need 24, it. 24, actually, because I'm going to have to do it for both names. But anyways, yes, yeah, so barbecue thing is uh, we had a good year. I've made uh, made a lot of friends, a lot of connections, a lot of festivals that went on that I'm going to be involved with next year now. Nice. And finally figured out the format that people have said, here's what we're looking for. So it, it's taken me a while to get the site to where I want it. Um, and I'm going to completely blow it up and do it over. Yay. Because I found out what people want. It took a while. They what? Said, You're listening to your, your, your users? Know. That's incredible. Well, the, the hardest thing with starting any project is actually having people tell you what they want. Mm -hmm. They just like... All right, yeah. Okay, yeah, if that's what you're going to do. No, I want to know what you guys are looking for because I'm coming from the beer world into barbecue and like I know what I want mm -hmm. and most of it's going to be a lot of what I want, but you know, what are other people looking for? And there's going to be a lot of traveling. I are, I have uh, two barbecue trips planned to Texas already. Jeez. Yeah. I am going to take advantage of that $50 one-way trip down to Austin. Ooh. Wait, really? Yeah. Like 50 or 60 bucks. Yeah. I have a round trip. I have a round trip trip <laughs> planned right now for 120 bucks round trip to Austin. What? For, and you go down on a Friday, you come back on a Monday, and I have it set up so I know which places I'm going to hit Saturday. Like, so I'm going to come in Friday afternoon, Saturday morning. I know where I need to go stand in line at at like 4 a.m. But I'm I'm I know where I'm going to be able to go, and then Monday I you know Monday afternoon I get up. I leave my hotel. I go grab something to eat, more barbecue, and I jump on a plane and come back to Pittsburgh. Holy crap, that's amazing! Yeah, that's it's amazing. I when I saw the prices, I'm like, you've got to be kidding me! And it's uh, if I have to pay for luggage, like the max it will cost me is two hundred dollars, mm -hmm. and that's because I'm going to want the upgraded seating. I want extra luggage, you know, stuff like that. Otherwise, I'm taking a backpack, me a backpack, and my stomach. I'm heading on down to Austin. <laughs> You're bringing the rest with you. <laughs> And, and you're carrying, and on. I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna your come back like carry forty on. pounds heavier. I don't need that extra luggage. So yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff going on with that, and uh, talking to possible sponsorships. Nice, which really surprised me that more people want to get into this. But it, it's not just like barbecue companies, but like hardware stores are talking, and like people that sell this stuff. So it's it's really cool. They want to find out what's going on in Pittsburgh, and we've got over forty barbecue joints in the greater Pittsburgh area. So. YinsLoveBBQ.com, YinsLoveBBQ.com, and really quick, should I drink that? We'll be coming back in 2018. Oh. Uh. I should have the official word this week-ish, maybe. We'll, we'll find out. Uh, those in the know know why there hasn't been a show and mm -hmm. uh, retooling things, and it's moving over to a new kind of podcast network-ish mm -hmm. thing. We'll see. I kind of like doing the Poly Shore. Okay. Yeah. All right. There you yeah, go. Yeah. Right. Uh, there's been uh, people, that, because they found out with the barbecue and the beer, they said, here's what we want. Here's what we'd like out of a podcast. So we're, we're, it's, it's going to be fun. So you're yeah. barely going to be on it is what you're telling me. Exactly. No yeah. one wants to listen to me. <laughs> they want they want to see everything. It's going to be it's gonna be everybody else. It's not going to be me. But yeah, there's, you're, there's you're a lot of handing it off to the next generation, right? Yes. The, the kid that's sitting over there is going to, he drinks root beer. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're going to go with that. <laughs> But uh, there, there's been breweries that have reached out that have said, hey, here's what we're missing in the area. Here's what's not being covered. Can you help us out? You haven't been around in a while. I'm like, yeah, let's let's do something. So it felt great to you know, take time off, though, because it's, mm. wow. Yeah, I feel a lot better. Like, I don't feel as stressed about everything. And I'm pretty much just going to go with the flow. Well, the flip. It's That's a chance awesome. to kind of look at it and restructure, too. It has. Uh, I've been doing it since 2006. And I've dropped little nuggets here and there, just mostly because I don't want feeds to drop my, mm -hmm. I don't want services to drop my fees. Uh, so I, I got lazy with, hey, let's do a best of show. Let's push another episode back out. Uh, but it, yeah, it's going to be really fun because there's, there's a lot more going on, especially around Pittsburgh. But it did give me a chance to take a step back and say, okay, what's going on right now nice. in the world? What's going on in the beer world? What are the other shows doing that? that they might be missing too. And mm -hmm. there's shows like, you know, like, should I drink that? And, um, 
craft beer radio and the beer report and a lot of shows that are still going on that we've been doing the same thing for a while. Now it's like, okay, yeah, we, we kind of laid the groundwork for then, beer podcasting. Yeah. And then you got guys doing new things like drinking partners. I know. Oh you, my you, God. Yeah. I love those guys. Yeah. yeah. They're awesome. Drinking partners has done a great job. Uh, Jason Sircone with breaking brews has done a great job too. So it's like, okay, you know, these guys are like the next generation that's, that's doing it, but I, I'm not going to go away anywhere. Mm. I'm, I'm now I can actually do what I want to do and not, do it just to get sponsorships or something. If I can, it's great. Mm. <laughs> but because I've been doing it so long, I can finally say, what do I want to do with it? And that's awesome. And I've talked, I've talked to some breweries and said, can I interview? And they're like, hell yes. Yeah. You can interview us. You know, what took you so long? I'm like, well, you know, I you know. wasn't <laughs> sure. And, but now I'm like, oh, I've got an idea of what we want to do. So awesome. long, so long cool. story short, should I drink that dot com? It's where you, you can go. find the, the craft beer podcast. There you go. And if you need a German translation, Katie knows the people. I got people. <laughs> You've got people. <laughs> Katie, and, what's and going clowns. on with you other than uh, Animal Crossing? Just Animal Crossing. Look up Dutters on the Animal Crossing. <laughs> I know me. a couple people just so, downloaded it in the chat room. Yes, be my friend in Animal Crossing. Is that your name on Animal Crossing? Is Dutters. That, Dutters? <laughs> Dutters. <laughs> find me. Be my friend. Yeah, that's about I mean, that's all I have going on right now, I think, exciting-wise. So you've replaced the scare house with Animal Crossing. Correct. Well, no, there's still scare house. There's still plenty of scare house. <laughs> yep. I type yep. it A and I just into Google Play and Animal Crossing is all over it. <laughs> Be our friend. So either it's listening to us or it just knows that it's... There you go. Five so just, million. Jeez. Sorry. Yep. Everybody's downloaded it. Be cool like us. There you go. Yes. And of course, Sorgatron on the Twitters, Sorgatron on Animal Crossing and wherever else you may be. Um, I guess you need a number or something or... Yeah. For I hate this Nintendo like number crap they still do. But anyways, have fun with that. Uh thank you everybody. Uh thank you, Doug Durda, Dudders, Doug and Dudders. Double yeah, D. The double D <laughs> producer Missy. And of yeah, course everybody it. hanging out in the chat room this week. Uh please check out everything at awesomecast.com. Check out their awesome chat interviews as well. And uh, follow everybody online and check out everything going on over at sorgatronmedia.com. Thanks to our awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.